Hey chaps, you join me on a ridiculously exciting afternoon. Beautiful all around me. This is farmland. And I saw last weekend that the farmer was digging up all of this area here. This area, as you can see all around me here, was piled high with rubbish, with concrete, with old building spoils, massive piles of tarmac, breeze blocks, you name it, it was piled up here. Then all of a sudden, out of the blue, he started digging it up and moving it to one side and getting rid of it. So of course, I saw this going on on my doorstep and I had to ask the question, what are you doing? And he said, well, I fancy a bit of a tidy up, spring clean. And I said, oh, that's brilliant news, thank you, because it is a bit of an eyesore. And I said, ah, but what are your plans now? What are you doing with that patch of land? And he said, well, the whole area is at the back end of your garden. What do you fancy doing with it? He said, if you want, you can go out there, you can rewild it do what you want with it, within reason, have a word with the neighbours and see what they say. And so, this is exactly what we're doing. This area that you see all around here, it's just currently bare soil, bare soil completely turned over and apparently ruined, it's all going to be rewilded by little old me. And you guys are going to join me during this process as we go about completely transforming, which was once a load of wasteland, a load of old rubbish, into something beautiful and wild again. As you can see, this whole area has been totally flattened. Those concrete blocks won't last, by the way, they're just there temporarily. But all of this whole area has been totally and utterly flattened. It looks like a complete waste ground. He's dug out what's known as a ream, which is a ditch to allow the drainage. And hopefully, this will get quite wild in the spring and the summer. But all overgrown will be a really good habitat, hopefully, for a lot of animals, so we'll keep an eye on this. Have a look over here. Look, as far as the eye can see, it's just nothingness. Complete and utterly derelict. If you wait along that path, and hopefully in a couple of months' time, this area is going to be beautiful. My first plan is to go through all of it, tidy it all up, get rid of all the concrete, all the plastic, any old debris that I can find, anything man-made that I can find here, I'm going to get rid of it. And then once I've got rid of it, I'm going to completely seed this whole area in wildflowers. Maybe we'll plant some trees and we'll see how it goes. It could be our ongoing project. So stay with us over the next few months and you will see a transformation from this apparent barren, horrible, man-made desert into something beautiful. Just putting up my signs. Hopefully that gets the point across and hopefully people will respect it. Here we go into time-lapse world. Look at this speedy growth right before our very eyes from brown to green. I'm just walking home and already have noticed one of my signs. It's still here. It's keeping people off the wild area, but look, it's not keeping one thing off. And look, bird droppings. See all these bird droppings, all these smears, and on top of this post, look, it's absolutely peppered with bird poo. This is a fantastic sign already just by creating this ocean of green out of this ocean of variety we're attracting the birds in the birds are already using this as a perch to look around their habitat has already extended they're already landing on this perch look i've given them a spot to land upon to look across this potential spot that they can look around they do their poos they have a good look already from nothing from a blank canvas we're creating variety oh look we're zooming through time again i love a bit of time lapse Good morning, and what a difference one month makes. One month ago, to this very day, this area was an ocean of mud. It was nothing. It had just been tilled. I'd gone over and got rid of all the rubbish, all the bits of concrete, all the bits of debris, anything man-made. I got rid of it. Then, of course, I sprinkled it with a massive array of wild flower seeds, and the result is this wonderful, wonderful ocean of green. But it's a wonderful ocean of green, not just because it's wild flowers. The most important part is the richness, is the diversity. The key to rewilding is not just going out and planting a load of trees or going out and planting what's known as monoculture. One species, one variety, that is not what it's all about. The ancient landscape of the UK was never covered from head to toe, from coast to coast, in just trees. That was an element of our landscape. What creates diversity in terms of the animals is the variety of landscape, of plants, of habitat, of ecosystem, of niches. That is what rewilding is all about. And that is exactly what I'm trying to do here. I didn't just come out and sprinkle one type of wildflower, two, three, four. I sprinkled a whole array, 20, 30, maybe 50 varieties, 50 different species were sprinkled across this area. 
Not only was it all the wildflowers that I sprinkled, in the process of turning it over and tilling it, it exposed seeds which were long buried in the soil, probably even like a metre or so down. By exposing them, they germinate and they come to the surface. One of those examples is right here. Right in the foreground is this ocean. This ocean of these horrible beasties. They're of course stinging nettles. Everyone hates stingers. Everyone goes to avoid them as much as possible, especially me when I'm banging around in my shorts. But stinging nettles are utterly, utterly vital for one of Britain's most beautiful animals. That of course is something I love and you love. That's butterflies. Red admirals, peacocks, small tortoise shells, all of their larvae feed on stingers. If we didn't have stingers here, we'd have none of these beautiful butterflies. So again, this is part of the biodiversity. As much as I didn't plant them, this is part of this picture that I want to paint. These guys are essential, and hopefully later in the year, we'll see the caterpillars feeding, and we'll see the butterflies flying, and then beyond them, we have this ocean of more wild flowers. All around me, you can see teeny weeny seedlings. If you look all around, each one of them more or less is different. Each one of these is a different type of wild flower. And each one of them, of course, is going to produce a different flower which will hopefully attract different sorts of insect. But not only is it about the flowers, it's about the habitats they create, the layering. Some leaves are open, some of them are broad, some of them shadow areas, some of them are very long and narrow. All of them are creating habitat, variety. This is what we rewilding is all about. Right now, they're little more than that big, but in time, we'll see all these different layers of habitat. You think about things like rainforests. Rainforests have the top canopy right at the very top. Then you come through the sub canopy, through the sub stories, down all the way down to the floor. Collectively, that is all necessary for the massive biodiversity we see in rainforests. And this is exactly the same here. It's the same in deciduous woodlands up on the hill. It's the same out in the water meadows that are over there. That is what I'm trying to create here. Habitat, variety. This is the key to rewilding. Oh, look, zooming through time again. Look at that, the colors coming through now as well. How gorgeous. And look, oh, look, there we go. Remember I talked a little while ago about the nettles? Well, this is exactly why I love the nettles. This is the small tortoiseshell butterfly. Once really common when I was little, then they got scarce, now they're coming back. What better way to take in the beauty of this wild area than from a drone's eye view? Look at us cruising around. And look at the gorgeous colour coming through the green. Isn't it beautiful? The purples, the whites, the yellows are coming through now as well. Oh, there's a beautiful white butterfly as well. I just love it. There's no better way to illustrate the beauty and the three-dimensionality of these layers than with the drone. Oh my goodness, I just love it. What a glorious way to spend a Sunday evening. And look all around us. Because my jungle has grown. <laughs> Isn't it awesome? It's absolutely beautiful. I'm surrounded by this ocean of purple. These are known as fern leaf fiddlenecks. Isn't that a wonderful, wonderful name? The beautiful thing about the fiddlenecks is that they attract insects from all around with their sight and their scent. Look, look at the bees all over it. Bees absolutely love fiddlenecks. So much nectar, so much scent, they're just attracted to them. And of course, if you get the bees, you get so many other insects as well. The beautiful butterflies. Here we've got a small tortoise shell feeding away on the nectar. Such a wonderful sight to see. And of course, with a variety of plants, you get so many other forms of life as well. There'll be grasshoppers in here. So many other species of insects. There'll be beetles, earwigs, a whole array. But most importantly, it's the bees. They mean so much to us. Yes, 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 it's happened. The thing I really hoped for, the seed, the thought, has happened. And it's happened right over here. Do you remember a little while ago I told you all about the nettles? There's this big swathe of nettles right here. And I was hoping by there being nettles, being a beacon, sending out messages, visual and scent messages, to butterflies such as peacocks, red admirals and so forth. I hoped, fingers crossed, this beacon would draw in the butterflies. It's only gone and happened. Look, over here. Follow my hand, follow my hand. Look, there they are. There they are. These are the beautiful peacock butterflies. Those gorgeous red butterflies you see with the lovely eye spots. And look, they're feeding here. If I go wide. In the nettle patch that we created. Wonderful. And that is the brilliant thing about rewilding. If it wasn't for us 
covered in the soil turned, exposing all those old seeds. Like for example, those little seeds that are here, I didn't plant them, they weren't in my wild flower mix. I was thinking of other plants and other plants that are obviously around the place as well. These nettles though, these seeds would have been in the soil. And then when the soil was turned and tilled, it exposed those seeds. Those seeds could have been down there for years and years, 10 if not 100 years, who knows? That's the amazing thing. When you get some soil and you turn it over and expose it to the sun and to the rain, all of a sudden, all that potential, all those seeds that have been laying dormant, suddenly they grow. And, this is what we've got, this patch of nettles. and the result of the patch of nettles, we provided the food plant, which in turn sent out visual and smell signs to the world, it's brought the peacock butterflies in. And suddenly from nothing, remember at the start of this video, this was an ocean of brown, it was like chocolate soup. From nothing, suddenly we have something. I want to take you guys even closer to the heart of our wild area just to see all the diversity of plants and the animals that it's attracting. But I've got a problem. I don't want to go walking through this because this is all beautifully virginal. The only thing that's been here, of course, is the animals, and I don't want to go tramping through it. So I'm looking at it thinking, hmm, how am I going to do this? I can put my drone over it, that's no problem at all. But I really want to go into the heart and do some details, and I'm wondering how I'm going to get in there. And then nature has the solution. Look down here. If you look down here, this looks like a patch of soil. If I then follow this patch of soil, look, follow my finger, follow my finger. Nature has given me the way. Look, there's a trail. There's a trail. Oh, look at that, really defined there. There's a trail going through, go, look, going through. If you follow my finger, follow my finger. Follow. There's a trail going through the plants. Clearly, a badger or a fox or someone has been along this path. Someone's been attracted by the diversity and they're in this area somewhere. I'm not saying we're gonna find it, but the fact is again, there's the evidence. The diversity has brought another animal species in. Yes, we are succeeding. And as our summer continued, and my kids just loved the wild area, so the diversity increased in the flowers and the plants, and of course the insects, and the mammals, and the birds. It just kept on and on and on. Just look at it. Isn't it glorious? This color, so attractive to the animals and to humans alike. All we can do by rewilding is gain, all of us. The beautiful poppies started appearing, of course, as well. Those classics. Just beautiful daisies as well. Every day I went out there, something had improved, something had increased. The richness, the beauty, just the enjoyment of the wild area kept on going. We need this so much. We absolutely loved it and so did the animals. The bees love those poppies. So do the hoverflies gathering here. And of course with the insects, it brings the larger animals that feed upon them. Everybody gains. And we've got this beauty as well, which of course is the classic evening primrose that we use as a medicine. And finally, the peacock butterfly. From those caterpillars we saw a few months ago, this is the adult. She's now feeding away and then very soon she'll be laying her eggs on the nettle patch and life will start all over again. Look what's happened. It worked. My unbelievably simple idea has worked. To do one thing, take a blank canvas, nothing on it, bare soil. And then from there, the idea grew like all these seeds. And the result is this beautiful, oh my goodness, look at these butterflies. Look at the butterflies. The white butterflies zooming around, look at them. One, two, three, four. there must be 10 of them, all flitting around as we speak. The zizzing of the finches in the background. The grasshoppers chirping. Oh my goodness, look, it worked, it worked, it worked. You can see how happy it's made me. We've given something back to nature. We took a rubbishy old bit of land. We made something from it. We created variety. We created beauty. We created biodiversity. It isn't just nature that needs biodiversity. We, humans, need it. We need this escapism. We need the natural beauty. This didn't cost a penny. Just a little bit of dirt under my fingernails and a bit of effort, and we've created something wonderful. People have been walking by this all spring and summer, loving it, smelling it listening to it, it makes us happy. And we, as a species, in the future, need this. We need this richness across the world to create oxygen, to create the variety that everybody and everything needs to survive and have a wonderful, rich life. We humans, through our activities, through our farming, through our houses, through our leisure centers, through our cities, we flatten this, we destroy this. And we think we know better, but we don't because we need this. And so each one of us, hopefully, will take something from this little experiment. 
even if you create a tiny postage stamp of this on your windowsill in your garden, you will create this beauty. You'll look at it, you'll adore it, you'll smell it, you'll see the bees and the butterflies and the everything that comes here. You need this in your life. We all need this in our life. And so, it's time for me to say goodbye. Thank you so much, and I'll speak to you guys soon. Goodbye.